Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video we're going to talk about Meshtastic. This is an um, off-the-grid decentralized communication network built with open source software on top of the radio communication LoRa which operates in the um, free frequencies so you don't need a license to operate with it. And uh, because of this, um, Meshtastic is becoming increasingly popular among uh, radio amateur operators. Uh, here I have a kit from Seed Studio which features uh, Xiao NRF52840 and Wii SX1262. There are a lot of digits and it's hard to remember them. But it's a really great affordable tiny kit. In this video I'm gonna share with you uh, my getting started experience for your convenience. The video is divided into several chapters and at the end we're gonna discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this kit. Let's get started. The Seed Studio Meshtastic kit has a very simple packaging. It comes in this small plastic bag. I started with unboxing it. It contains two parts, the Xiaomi module and the add-on board with the antenna. The add-on board is connected over serial peripheral interface, also known as SPI, to the Xiao module. The Seed Studio Xiao module is equipped with Nordic NRF52840 ARM Cortex M4 microcontroller that runs up to 64 MHz. In terms of connectivity, it offers Bluetooth 5.0 and NFC. The on-chip memory is 1 MB flash and 256 kilobytes of RAM. Furthermore, there is onboard memory of 2 MB QSPI flash. There is a USB-C connector that is used for both programming and powering the Xiao module. Furthermore, there are pins for attaching a battery. I'm going to show you how to use them at the end of the video. The pinout is exactly the same as on the other Xiao modules from this family. There are 11 GPIOs that are PVM capable and 6 of them can be used as analog to digital converters. The second part of the kit is the WIO SX1262 add-on board that connects to the Xiao module over SPI. Inside of it there is a Semtec SX1262 chip for LoRa communication. It comes with a small antenna that is attached to the IPEX connector and eventually you can disconnect the antenna and replace it with another better suited antenna for long range communication. When stuck with the Xiao board the total height is just 21 mm. All modules from the Xiao family are famous for their tiny size. Xiao NRF52840 is not an exception. The dimensions are just 21 by 17.8 mm. My YouTube channel has a lot of viewers from the US, so here is a side-by-side -side comparison with a quarter of a door. I want to make sure that I'm using the latest version of the Meshtastic firmware and because of this I'm going to connect this kit to my computer and I'm going to upload the latest version of the firmware. The process is straightforward and very simple. Connect your Xiao Meshtastic kit to a computer using a USB-C cable and open the Chrome web browser. Just make sure that the cable is not a power only one and it's capable of uh, transmitting data over USB. Go to the web page flusher.meshtastic.org and select your target device. Click on the tab for NRF52840 to quickly locate the CGL kit. After that, choose the firmware release option. If you are unsure, I highly recommend you to go with a stable or a better firmware version. After that, click flash, a pop-up will appear, click continue to confirm and to proceed. At this point, you see another pop-up. This time it is going to be from the Chrome web browser and you'll be asked to select the serial communication that matches the Xiao Meshtastic kit. Now here there will be a difference depending on your operating system. I'm a Linux user and I'm using Ubuntu 2404 so the Xiao Meshtastic kit is recognized as slash dev slash tty asm0 and this is the option that I've selected from the pop-up menu in the uh, Chrome web browser. Click the green button to enter DFU mode. In a second your Xiao Meshtastic kit should appear as a USB drive mounted on your computer. Download the firmware UF2 file and 
copy this file to the DFU drive. Once the copying of the file completes, your Xiaomi Shita Stick Kit will automatically reboot into normal mode and it will be running the version of Mastastic firmware that you've just uploaded. After turning on this Seed Studio Mastastic Kit, the first thing that I'll need to do is to configure the node. And for this, I can either use a web interface or a mobile application. The Mastastic mobile app is available for both iOS and Android. And in this case, I'm going to use my Android smartphone, connect um, to the device over Bluetooth and configure it through the app. I had already downloaded and installed the Mastastic Android app from Google Play, so I just needed to open it. It is very important to make sure that the Bluetooth communication is enabled on the smartphone and that the Mastastic application has the privileges to use it. Please note that in the past I had already configured one other uh, Seed Studio Xiao Mastastic kit and now the idea is to set up a second one so that I can communicate between the two kits. From the mobile application I clicked on the big plus button. I selected the target device. As you probably know very well Bluetooth requires a code for the pairing and the default code is 123456. I haven't changed it so I use the default pin and I was able to pair my smartphone to the Xiao Mastastic kit and after that to connect them over Bluetooth. After that for the settings of this new Mastastic node I've enabled the MQTT module and I also ensured that the client proxy is enabled. Keep in mind that this Xiao Mastastic kit communicates over Bluetooth so I need to use my smartphone as a proxy. By enabling the client proxy setting, I'm allowing the Xiao Mastastic kit to use the smartphone's network connection to connect to the MQTT broker. MQTT is a very popular machine to machine communication protocol. So when my phone has connection to the Mastastic kit over Bluetooth, the mobile application communicates over TCP IP with an MQTT broker and this is a backup connection in case that the LoRa communication is uh, not possible for one reason or another. You can also configure your own MQTT broker however in this video I would like to not go into too much details about MQTT because the focus is actually on the LoRa communication. Let's move on to a demonstration. I bought two kits from Seed Studio, so I have two nodes and now let's try to exchange messages over LoRa between them. In order to start communicating over the mesh, I have to set my region. I'm based in Europe, so from the Meshtastic application, I'm going to select the frequency for Europe. I know that a lot of my viewers are from other regions, so please configure the region accordingly to your location and to the local regulations in your region. For the demonstration, I have two identical Xiao Meshtastic kits. One of them was configured in the past and at the beginning of the video I showed you how to configure the other one. I've set up the location to Europe, so now I can exchange messages between these two nodes over LoRa. I still need my Android phone with the Meshtastic application to connect to each of the two nodes over Bluetooth so that I can send a message and after that to disconnect from the node that has sent the message to connect to the other node and to verify that it had received the message. As you can see the mobile application UI is pretty nice and there is a tab for exchanging messages. It looks just like chatting with your friend. Switching from one node to the other through the mobile application and Bluetooth is a bit time consuming. For your convenience, thanks to the magic of modern technologies and video editing, I've speeded up this part of the video. The important thing of this demonstration is that the LoRa communication through Meshtastic works with these to Xiao kits. As you can see in this demonstration, the two kits are in a very close proximity on my desk. Obviously the idea with LoRa is to cover long range communication. Although I haven't made any measures yet, I'm a little bit skeptical about the default small antenna. However, the IPEX connector allows us to change the antenna with something more suitable for long range communication. 
The Xiaomi Morio can run on batteries. Here I have a couple of batteries that are intended to be for a camera, but I'm going to repurpose them and connect them to the Xiaomi modules uh, using wires that are leftovers from some um, WLED projects that I did in the past. These are rechargeable lithium ion batteries manufactured by Patona as replacement batteries for Leica cameras. Each of these two batteries has a high capacity of 1300 milliampere hours. Here is a closer look at the cables that I'm planning to use. They're for a completely different purpose. They're supposed to be used with addressable LED strips and because of this they have three wires. However, the connection between the cables is really good so I'm going to cut one of the wires and use them for the batteries. For this task we have to quickly teleport to my soldering desk. Here I have all the needed tools including a Velar soldering iron and an AV fume extractor, an open source hardware gadget that I've designed to keep the dangerous fumes out of my face. I removed the green wires from all cables. I decided to use the following color coding, red for the positive side and white for the negative. I soldered the cables to the battery as well as on the back of the Xiao module. Xiao NRF52 840 has a battery charging chip that supports lithium batteries with charge and discharge management. This is happening thanks to the Texas Instruments BQ25105 battery charge chip inside the Xiao module. I repeated the soldering procedure for both of my Meshtastic kits and at the end we are back on my other desk where I have my smartphone and the two Meshtastic kits now connected and operating on batteries. You have already seen the Meshtastic Android app and you are familiar how it works so you know the drill. I'm connecting to each node, sending a message, after that I'm connecting to the other node again over Bluetooth to verify that the message has been received and I'm sending another message. It is the same demonstration that I showed you previously but this time both nodes are working on batteries. Now let's talk about the advantages of this tiny kit and Meshtastic. First of all Meshtastic is an open source project and this is a huge advantage because there is a growing community and the source code is available on GitHub. So you can either get started as a user or even contribute with new features or bug fixes in the source code available in the Git repositories. I remember that several years ago there was a huge hype about Wara Van and people were buying expensive uh, gateways. However, the disadvantage with Wara Van was obviously the high price of the gateway and the time consuming maintenance. So, Meshtastic, unlike that, has the advantage to be very affordable. Speaking about this particular kit from Seed Studio, it has several very important advantages. First of all, it's very affordable. Second, it is tiny. You can see the small size of it. Number three is that you can run it on batteries. And the fourth advantage is that thanks to the Nordic microcontroller, it is very power efficient. This tiny kit is great, but it's not perfect and there are some disadvantages. First of all, because of the small size, there are not enough GPIOs and this is a challenge if you want to attach sensors for telemetry. By default, the Meshtastic firmware that comes pre-built and available for download for this kit uh, uses a couple of pins for uh, GPS. However, I don't have a GPS and in order to replace the GPS with an I2C sensor, I had to pre-compile and flash the Meshtastic firmware. I'm going to show you how to do this in a separate video. Another disadvantage is the tiny antenna. If you want to establish uh, communication on a higher range, uh, you definitely have to consider changing the antenna. As a conclusion, my verdict is that this kit from Seed Studio is great for getting started with Meshtastic. The Xiao module is equipped with Nordic NRF52840 ARM microcontroller that has Bluetooth 5 as well as NFC. The add-on board that's part of the kit features Semtec SX1262 LoRa module for the Meshtastic communication. As you have seen, we can power this kit either from the USB-C connector or from a battery. Thank you very much for watching this video. 
Meshtastic is a very interesting topic and I plan to make more videos about it in future. I'll definitely want to cover and show you how to compile the Meshtastic firmware from source code and enable the I2C communication on this particular kit from Seed Studio. Uh, my plan is to attach um, an I2C sensor for telemetry data. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, hit the like button and of course stay tuned for new videos. See you soon.